Hi, my name is Alex Wallach, and I'm from Conservation International, where I'm on the Trends Daughters team. And then in this video, I'm going to show how to import custom land cover data into Trends Daughters. Now, using this feature depends on changing the land cover legend that's used in Trends Daughters. And if you haven't done that before, I recommend you see our separate video on changing the land cover legend, as that's required in order to be able to import custom data. Given that we have another video showing how to do that, Right now I'm just going to change the legend very quickly, but just as a quick reminder, you want to go to the settings screen, pull up the custom land cover classes section of that screen, and what I'm going to do for this demo is use data from the Map Biomas project. So what I'm going to do is click load and select a legend that I've already defined that matches that used in the Map Biomas product. Double click on the file, click OK, and now we're using the map BLMS legend across trends.earth. So once that's done, what I can do is open up trends.earth. On the right-hand side of the screen, you see the features from trends.earth. And what we're going to be doing is calculating SDG 15.3.1 with custom national data. So the first step of this is going to be very similar to what you would do if you were just using the default data in trends.earth. What I'm going to do is click Execute Remotely for this sub-indicators for SDG 15.3.1 tool. Give it a second. It can take a minute to load, particularly if you're using a uh, complex land cover legend. We're going to do this with the UNCCD default data, but broken down into classes from the Map Biomas project. So the way that this works is I'm going to click this UNCCD default data button, but it's very important that on this screen that pops up, also reset land cover legend, I click no. What this is asking is, do you want to use the seven class legend that comes from the UNCCD for the default data, or do you want to use uh, some other custom legend that you may have already defined in trends.earth? That's what we want to do, use our own custom legend. So this is asking, do you also want to reset the land cover legend to the UNCCD default? We're going to say no. And now what's happened is all of these options are set to the dates and products that are used for the UNCCD default data. However, if we scroll down, we'll see we have this very long and detailed land cover transition matrix that's using classes from the map BMS project. If I had selected yes, this would only show the seven UNCCD default classes, which is not what we want. So now what I'm going to do is click schedule remote execution. And if we go to data sets, you'll see that we've just submitted two tasks, baseline and progress both of which are running just the uh, default data from the UNCCD, however, broken up into the map BMS classes. The only reason I'm doing this is this lets me get uh, some of the baseline soil organic carbon and productivity data sets that we'll need uh, for what I'll show you in a second, which is how to uh, break things down with actual custom land cover data for map BMS. These two can take a minute to run. I have, of course, already run them before so that we can move on along with this video, but just do know it could take you know, 10, 15 minutes for these data sets to process, depending on the region that you're looking at. The next step is to import custom data. So remember there's two tabs here, algorithms and data sets. I'm gonna click on data sets, then import data set, then import custom land cover data set. What this will let me do is import the custom data that's available from Matt BLMS uh, for Brazil. I've already downloaded this data to my computer. If you're using custom data for your country or for a project area, you'll want to have that data already available. You can import either rasters or polygon data sets. We're going to import a raster. Click Browse. I have these saved already on my desktop for three years, 2001, 2015, and 2019. I'll need to import each one individually. So first I'll do 2001. 
I need to enter the year of the data, 2001. Depending on the data you're importing, you may need to modify the resolution or change the no data value. I'm just going to leave those as they are for this data set, but do know you may need to change those depending on uh, what's used in your national data. What's very important though is this edit definition button. This will tell trends.earth how to actually interpret the values that are present in your data file. So when I click edit definition, what's just happened is it's read the file and it's telling me I see these following codes in your file, 0, 3, 4, 11, 12, 15, etc. You need to tell trends.earth what each of these codes means. So is a 0, for example, no data, or is it beach, dune, and sand spot? Similarly, is a 3 other non-vegetated areas, or is it an urban area? What you'll need to do is go through for your particular data set and tell it what these values mean. Once that's done, you can click Save Definition to File, and it will save those definitions so that you don't have to keep re-entering it every time you import new data. I've, of course, already done this, so I'll click Load Definition from File, select the file, which is right here, and then you'll see these values are now all filled in with the correct values for the MapBiomas data set. I'll just click Save, give this a file name, click OK. It'll take a second to import, but once that's done, we'll have the land cover data for 2001 for Rondonia. So what we've done here is we've cheated and we've skipped ahead and only took about a minute or two to import that data set, but just for the sake of your time, I don't want you to sit here and watch that progress bar. But you'll see now that that land cover data set is imported. If we want to test that it imported correctly, I can just click this load data set button, add default layers, and what you see here now is the land cover data for Rondonia in Brazil. You'll see it has the correct year assigned, 2001. And if you zoom in, you can see this is a much higher resolution data set than the default product from the European Space Agency uh, that's cut in this data set is customized uh, for Brazil. If we expand the legend, you'll see the 35 classes that we defined before for the map BMS legend um, that are present here. So of course the green uh, is different types of forest cover, the red, urban, and then the yellow, uh, different types of cropland. If you're interested in using this tool for UNCCD reporting uh, for this cycle, do know you'll need to import three different land cover class data sets. The first uh, for ideally some uh, time period around 2000 to 2001, the second for a time point around 2015, and the third for a time point around 2019. That will let you assess a baseline, which will be in the case of the example we'll show here between 2001 and 2015 and then a reporting period from 2015 to 2019. So to import those 2015 to 2019 data sets, you'll just need to repeat the same process I just showed you twice more to import the 2015 data and the 2019 data. I'm gonna do that now, but I'm gonna skip it so that you don't have to watch me uh, do the exact same process twice. So now I've skipped ahead, and you can see that we have three different land cover data sets now in our data set screen, and that's because we've imported the 2015 and the 2019 data as well. So now I've loaded them into my legend, and you can see the 2001 data, 2015, and 2019. And I imported the 2015 and 2019 data using the exact same process as I did for the 2001, and then I just added them to my map with this add default layers function. Now that we have three different land cover layers, we can calculate the land cover degradation data sets for the baseline, that's the 2001 to 15, and the reporting, the 2015 to 19 period. We do this by going to algorithms, land cover change, and what we want to select here is execute locally. And this is because we have our own land cover data sets locally that we want to use in this tool. 
and then on this window that comes up, you'll see if we scroll down, a line cover transition matrix with all of the classes from the map BLMS legend. And then very importantly, these options at the top where we can select the initial year and target year layer. So these are the two layers that will define the beginning and end of whatever period we're looking at. So here we want to look at a baseline period and that's 2001 to 2015 for this example because that's what we have land cover data for and then a reporting period of 2015 to 2019. You can also change the region that you're looking at and just because this calculation can take a little bit of time to make it faster for this demo, I'm just going to look at a small buffer around the city of Portobello. So I'm going to select that city, the 25 kilometer buffer, click OK. Again, you'll want to select whatever region makes sense for your analysis. So it could be an entire country, it could be a region. I'm just selecting a small region to make this demo more quick. Just takes a second to save. And then once that's done, I want to select the correct layers. So first we're going to run the 2001 period. So for initial year, I'll select initial year 2001 through 2015. So I'll select imported data set 2015. Now it's very important to correct, select the correct layers here. You'll notice I have a whole bunch of options down here at the bottom from other data sets I've run before. We want the one that says imported data set 2015. The other thing I'd want to look at is make sure that this transition matrix makes sense for my country. As a reminder, what this is saying here is that, for example, transition from forest to non-forest is negative in terms of degradation. Transition from forest to non-vegetated area is also degradation, uh, etc. It's important to review this matrix and make any changes to make sure that it makes sense for your region. For now, I'm just going to leave it as is and click execute locally. You'll see some pop-ups uh, come up at the top of your screen. What's happening right now is it's calculating the land cover degradation layer for 2001 to 2015. So we'll do this again in a second for 2015 to 2019 as well. So that's what I'm going to do now. Land cover change, execute locally. This is the exact same thing I did before. I'm just going to change the dates. So I'm going to select here imported data set 2015 and then target your layer will be imported data set 2019. So make sure these dates make sense. Click execute locally and now it's calculating my reporting period land cover degradation layer. Again just takes a second to calculate. Once that's done, if I go to the data set screen, I see here now these two things on top just run at 12.04 and 12.05 p.m. local time here for me. These are the two land cover degradation layers that I just ran. If I wanted to view one, I can add them to my map as always by selecting add default layers from this data set to map. I'll zoom in on this room where I just ran on a small area around a city. And so what you're looking here is the transitions layer. This is just showing uh, in different colors, uh, loss of different cover types from the period of 2015 to 19. This is showing the land cover data for 2019, the land cover data for 2015, and then the land cover degradation layer for that period. And so we have, of course, two of these data sets, one for baseline one for reporting. So now I'm ready to run the final SDG indicator using my custom data and I can do that just by clicking execute locally. Let me just collapse this so you can see a little better. Since we're doing this for reporting to UNCCD we'll want to have both a baseline period and then also a progress period. So I click this checkbox for include progress period and the easiest way to do this, because there's a number of different drop-downs, is first to remember at the beginning of this process we calculated 
all of the indicators that go into the SDG, so land cover, productivity, and soil organic carbon, using just the UNCCD default data sets. That was before we used the custom data. So for the baseline, I'm going to select that baseline data set we ran. And then for the progress period, I'm going to select that progress data set that we ran. And remember, in trends.earth, progress is used interchangeably with reporting. So the reporting period is the progress data set. Now, if I just hit execute locally, I would just get the default data, not using my custom land cover data. So what I need to do now is select this advanced tab, go to land cover, and instead of the data set that came and that default data that I ran, I want to go up here to the top. And you'll see this is that data set I ran just a few minutes ago at 1204 for land cover degradation from 2001 to 2015. And that's the one using my custom data. If I had been smart, I should have added a little note in the box for that tool because that would show up here and then I could be very sure that that was the correct data set. So it's recommended that you do add a note uh, when you run that custom land cover degradation data set. Under advanced, I'll want to do something similar, expand that advanced tab for the progress period. And for land cover degradation, I want to make sure I select that data set I just ran, land cover degradation from 2015 to 19. At 12.05 p.m., that's the custom data I just ran. I can leave everything else set the way that it is because we didn't make any changes to productivity or soil organic carbon. And then I can just click execute locally. But before I do that, I'm just going to add a note here. SDG using custom map VLMS data. Click execute locally. This will just take a second to run. So now you'll see we've skipped ahead and the SDG 15.3.1 layer is finished processing. And so if desired, we can check to make sure that the results are using the custom land cover data we used. I can do this by going to the add data set button, select specific layers. What I'm going to do is add the 2001 land cover layer from this data set to the map. So that's what you see on top here now. And what you'll see is if I flicker on and off the data that was used in the SDG, it matches almost exactly the custom land cover data we imported. You'll notice they look slightly different, and that's just due to the fact that the data had to be reprojected when it was combined with all the other data sets for productivity, carbon, etc., that are used in the SDG layer. So now that we have this final layer processed, if we wanted to use it for UNCCD reporting, I can just go to this algorithm screen, select the UNCCD reporting tab, click Execute Locally, and I can select that data set right here, click Execute, whoops, turn this data set off, click Execute, and then that will create a zip file that I could use for submission to UNCCD.